four hour work week. That's the topic for this podcast. And I started with the, uh, I read the, I didn't read the book, I, uh, I listened to the book uh, over a year ago. And it was always um, one of my top goals is to have to, to have a laptop life, mm-hmm. to work from everywhere. And I changed my intents for, from a laptop life to an iPad life because an iPad is smaller. And <laughs> next goal is to an, I- an iPhone life. It's only need an iPhone. So, and then I started reading the four hour work week. And, uh, um, but I did, uh, I heard a lot of um, rumors about it and was thinking, okay, maybe it's a bit, a little bit cheesy, a little bit cheesy title, four hours yeah. work week, impossible. So I think, okay, just uh, start with it. I, I, I bought it in on, on, on iTunes or, or whatever, and um, I d- just start um, listening to it in my car. And it, it, it was be- better than expected. Yeah. And it, it was exactly what, what, what I'm looking for. I want, okay, I want to work less and make more money, but uh, but uh, work less. And it's the most mm-hmm. important thing. And, and Last um, two months, three months ago in November, my, my daughter born, and, and I, had, I had one goal. I, okay, I want to be more home, mm-hmm. and I gave myself six weeks to get everything done to be yes, more most free of my agency. So that's um, was uh, was for, for, was for me, made me a game changer. Just because I was thinking, okay, what I need to eliminate for my work. Yeah. Every day, every minute of my life, I was like, okay, maybe someone else can do this better than me. That was my main goal, and that's why I started to scale up my team, my virtual team. Yeah, and that, that was yes, it's still to today a game changer for me because I have so much more free time now to do other things, and have a, a well established agency is running every day, uh, worldwide, and maybe I do a few hours a week. Um, uh, it needs my attention, and that's great. I yeah. think it, it embodies like what a lot of people want to do when it comes to entrepreneurship. I think if you are interested in either starting an agency, whether that be offering ad services, creative services, Google, email, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. there's a big chance you got into this industry because you want a laptop lifestyle. Yeah, yeah ultimately exactly. it's I think it's the biggest attraction point in today's day and age of people to start a business. Yeah. They either read the book from Tim Ferriss or they hear it from someone else. And what they most likely envision is quite often laying on the beach in Bali yeah. with a pina colada <laughs> running their business. Yeah, because yeah. that's kind of like the, the feeling people always get if you start around a four hour work week. But it is more like what Corne just described is you need to read the book, how it applies to your life. Yeah. Of course, how Tim puts it out there in the world is that, hey, traveling the world, etc. which you can do. You know, that's, I'm not saying that's not possible, but again, it's like, how do you apply four hour work week to your system? Like, how do you want to put this together in your life? Yeah, I think it, it all stems down to freedom, right? Freedom mm-hmm. to decide how you... I mean, this time freedom and money freedom. It's ultimately the two, yeah, the two exactly. complications that you want to get together. Yes, yeah. and I think time freedom is even more important than money. Okay, you need Facts. money in this world, uh, of course. No, but, of course. But I mean, time, uh, um, for example, if, if you have young, young children and, and Joshua, you're also getting a baby um, uh, in, in, a f- in a year or August, something. Yeah. August. And, and August already. So, um, and then, then you want more time. And uh, especially the forced four years are super nice. Before they go to school and everything, you mm-hmm. want to be there. Mm-hmm. And if you are working all day, you can never get that time back. Mm-hmm. And I heard from my own dad, he was also always working and, I, and he missed that time from, 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 from my childhood. So, yeah. so I was thinking, okay, um, and I don't want that for myself. So I do everything and I make the decision, okay, maybe a little bit less money in, but much more time. And the fun part is I make more money now uh, with, with less work because I, my process are much no, better. It, it, and that's yeah. the thing, you know, it's like it all, how it all comes together. It's like, I was listening to a podcast last week with uh, Michael Rubin and he said the same thing. He said like, if I right now would have gotten a deal, would I give up all the money I have, but I would get 20 years back of my life? He would he would take it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And I think this is uh, quite often if you ask people who are like around, you know, that 60, 70 year old mark who yeah. kind of have made it and you ask them this question, what they all say is like, I would give up everything I have to get time back. Yeah, because at a certain point, time is just so much more valuable than money. 100%. Like if you're laying on your deathbed, you cannot take the money with you. Yeah, because then time becomes this ultimate factor point. So the earlier you realize that how valuable your time is, and I always kind of say is like, um, it's not again cliche to say, but like the real love you can give to someone is your time, because that's yeah. the most valuable thing someone can offer someone else. Yeah, man, hundred percent. Is it, it, it Alex Ramosi again? Right, that says exactly. when he was when he was uh, in his twenties, he wants to be a millionaire. And now he's a well, multi multi millionaire. Now he wants to be twenty again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, it's a double edged sword because it's at a certain point. It's like it's hard to if you're in your twenties and 
you do not have a whole lot of funds to say, oh yeah, for our work week because time is so important. Yeah. So I think that's why it's kind of like the struggle that people make against each other. Because of course you need to hustle, you need to work hard. Yeah. And it requires a lot of time. You know, that's why people always say, if you want to build a big business, uh, you need to give up time. And it's also different headaches you get, you know, because I know when we were at six figures, I was dealing with completely different points than when yeah. now we're at seven figures. Yeah. It's a completely different game chain with things that are going in my mind yeah. from a time perspective as well. Yes, and, uh, but it, it depends, of course, on the side of uh, sort, of, sort of business you have. If, if, if it's possible, yeah. what, you, what Tim Ferriss says in the book, he el- eliminated everything. He also forwarded his phone calls. So one of the things I did already before, but he also, um, in the last podcast we talked about, um, I was killing all my phone calls. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. was also talking in his book about that. I already did that before because it was so annoying. I was uh, desperate looking for a solution. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's so important to, to, to see what are you doing? And can someone else maybe do it better? And mostly someone else can do it much better because they are more focused on that dedicated task. And and, 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 and especially for me, uh, I have now seven people around the world working for me uh, all day, all day, not all day, but the whole week. Yeah. And, that, and, and, that, and, and that's, yes, that gives me so much more time, but in the end also much more quality. And I have more time to work on my business and not mm-hmm. in my business. I think yeah. Yeah, that's a very fair point. Although I definitely think the question you need to ask yourself is, it works great for the three of us, but I think the only reason why it works for us and we're able to apply it is because we've been on the other side. Yeah. And I highly recommend any entrepreneur, you first need to go all in on yourself. Mm-hmm. You need to run the business as a one-man shop. Because if you have yeah. your hands in every part of the business, you know how it runs, and you know if you find someone to delegate it to, how you can control it. Yeah. Because if you do that from the beginning, and you do not know how certain areas of your business run, it's like, I just do not see how you scale this forward. Yeah, it's super important when you say everything because uh, I had them in my, my, my own store, with physical stores, and with my e com business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did everything. I, I was working on Saturday in the store, on, 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 on in the night. I was working in a warehouse and on the customer service department. We, I also did everything. And then you, then you know the processes, and then that's also the moment where you can optimize. I see still customers from my agency struggling with their business because mm. they want to be on Ibiza or on Bali and have no time to really manage their business. And they, yeah. they are stressed out because yeah, I, yes, my, my customer service is not working and my fulfillment is not working, but the, the, because they don't understand the process. They never did it by themselves. Yeah. You we also see the biggest CEOs from, uh, not, not a real example, maybe, but uh, for example, maybe the CEO of Starbucks, for example, and I'm not sure. Well, I think the best example to kind of explain this is like how with what Jeff Bezos did at Amazon, at a certain yeah. point, he banned yes. PowerPoints. Yeah. Yeah. And he told everyone, we have a one pager, mm-hmm. everyone prints the information, and he was present in every single department, sitting around a table discussing this. And yes, by doing and, so, and, he and has and his and finger on Musk everything. is also doing it. He's, he's sleeping at the factory, yeah. just, yeah. and I'm 100% sure that he also, uh, put things together for his Tesla cars just to see how the process is working. And as an entrepreneur, you s- you can make a difference only if you really know the process. If you're in your in your office watching uh, your 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 uh, the, the, mm-hmm. to, to, to your groundwork, whatever. Yes, that's that's not working all the time. You need to be there at where your customer is. I also to all, also to all my, my customers from my agency watch the emails and the phone calls your customer sending to your e-com business and, and, and do, do, your e-com, do your customer service one week um, uh, at yourself. So you, see, mm-hmm. you know where the pain point is in, in your business. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big favorite, it's like the 90-10 rule. It's kind of like, I would personally, I would never 100% trust something of my business to someone else, but I would trust and give it to them 90%. So yeah. if 10% of the time I check on them, I make sure I have my hands in there and it, it's rolling well, that gives me the satisfaction. And that's yeah. great to say, but th- that's how I run my business. I have a Monday, I have a 30 minute meeting, exactly 30 minutes with, all, with, the, with the complete team. I discuss all the things we need to do that week. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the week, uh, before we launch our campaigns, I check every campaign myself. But this is a really structured process. So I need to only check quality. I check uh, 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 on 18 points, I check all my campaigns. Mm-hmm. And then I'm done, but I can do that in, in maybe one or two hours. A little bit depends how busy the week is and how fast I am at the moment, if I can do my deep work or not. But that, that's, that's the whole thing I do. But, and, then, and, and then I'm 100% sure that I'm still in control. So if someone 
make a mistake or, or uh, um, it's not the customer who gets hurt because I have a m- a plenty of time to, to self, self my, my, myself to fix it myself or my team can fix it yeah. before we send it out. So um, some customers when you were thinking, oh, now your team is doing all the work and you are nowhere. That, that's not true. I, every, also on holidays, the one or two hours a week, I have always one or two hours a week. Also yeah. on holiday, no problem for me. Yeah. And then I know, okay, everything goes really well. Uh, it was a time I was... Um, that's another story, but it was uh, I was really busy b- busy with my econ business. It was so hard. I was thinking, okay, I got no, I got three weeks to Indonesia, traveling there, and I will see how the business will come back when mm-hmm. I'm back. That will cost me eight hundred thousand euros when I come back. Crazy. They made so yeah. many mistakes. That was the big, the most expensive holiday. I was of, about of to say, life. an expensive trip to Indonesia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I never do that again because I, 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 I am a little bit of control freak, but I wanted. Not 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 on every detail, but in the in the in, in the end result, I wanted to have a check so I can be one hundred percent sure if I call from a customer that I know what was going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of well marketers obviously because uh, that's sort of the industry we're in. They try and skip over right, like understanding all the processes and understanding how the business works. And that's a probably a very crucial mistake that I made as well in the past was that I tried to outsource everything too quickly. Obviously very much influenced by the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, where he was using freelancer websites to outsource the work to. I followed you know, the, the same mm-hmm. path. And then because I wasn't an expert at what I was trying to outsource, or at least I didn't have a basic understanding of what I was trying to outsource, I would basically just outsource it to the first person that applied to the job. And not for just, so obviously it was Facebook ads, um, and then I'd get a portfolio. They'd send a portfolio of like page likes, um, engagement. Mm. And because I had no idea what was good and what wasn't good, I was like, okay, well, that, that looks impressive. That seems impressive. Let's just take this guy on. And all I was focused on was how cheap can I outsource it for and how big of a profit margin can I generate with this client? That's a really good way to say, Josh. That was also my first mistake. Yeah. Too cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes now I, my clients uh, ask me, okay, how do you do that with, with the artists people? Are they, they are really cheap. No, they are super expensive. Yeah, I, I pay them always. Uh, I made. Uh, I learned that I pay them um, more, more than ever average, uh, mm-hmm. m- much more than average. Yeah, and I pay them uh, in advance. So I pay them before they do the job. I, uh, at first, I did it after the job. But I now have to think, okay, I trust you on the Philippines, I trust you in India, or yeah. uh, whatever are you. I, 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 I wire the money. And the, the biggest uh, yes, uh, fail what can happen is that I lose my, my, my first payment. That, that's the biggest, but, but yeah. what, I, what, what, what I get back for, they get so much trust yeah. for, 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 for the women or guide on the other side that they are thinking, okay, I need to finish this job because I, they already paid me, so I need to, to do my, my, my super best. Mm-hmm. And that works really well. At uh, first I did uh, otherwise around and I got really bad results. Yeah. Low quality people. Uh, the the work w- was not finished uh, on time, and now I pay them in advance, and it works perfect. Yeah, yeah. That obviously, you know, stuff like this just comes with experience. Um, but it's like I said, you you need to make sure that you don't skip over this step. Having the basic understanding of what goes on in your business, having a basic understanding of the service delivery, and only then, when you can find someone better, or if you want to free up your time, only then do you actually find someone to do on your behalf? It's like you, you need to reach the kind of the top of the mountain before you can do a step lower. Yeah, and it's exactly. It's the same with everything in life. Yeah. The same reason why if I just look like people I know who for example, made an insane amount of money with Bitcoin and mm-hmm. it was the first time them touching money. Yeah. Every time I speak with them now, they're all depressed. Yeah. Because they never went through the hurdles. They never had to struggle. They don't they appreciate never, it. They never had the pain to build something legit. Like if yeah. you go from a zero to multi-million, within like a span of a couple of months, yeah. you've basically missed out on the essential parts to get exactly. where you are. Yeah. It kind of comes back to previous podcasts we've done when it comes to mindset. Like you need to go through these hurdles. Yeah, You need to fall down to the lowest point you can to really recognize like, who am I? Because mm-hmm. if you do not know who you are, if you do not know what you're doing from the business, yeah. a four hour work rate will just not work. Because there's always one thing that will prevail. And I think we can all go on Instagram right now and we can point them out. but. 99% of the people running business nowadays, it's just people with too much ego. Yeah, like the, 100%. the business is an extension for them to show, look what I have done. Like you can go to so many Instagram profiles where it says, look at me, I'm the entrepreneur. Yeah. Look me in the Lambo, mm-hmm. like this and this. But yeah, it's kind it's of a, like- I see it as the fake internet entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now with the, yeah, 
recession, whatever is coming to it, the storm is coming, and th they will disappear. And I'm, I'm quite happy True, with that like because we get more real entrepreneurs mm -hmm. back. They work, they, they really do the work. Yeah. And what, what you're just saying is that there are some people just read the four hour work week, implement the process. Maybe it works well in the first few years for them because it was an easy economy, and they never did something with it themselves. And they will, will, will get backfired in exactly. at any moment. Yeah. And I think that's just like, to come up, basically what both of you said is like to make a four hour work week work for you. If you can attach the business from yourself, your ego, mm -hmm. and you can make a decision that's best for the business, yeah. not yourself, that's how you can start delegating tasks. Because if you're sense. still at the top and you're making ego-driven decisions, yeah. you're just gonna go on a ramp that's only gonna take you downhill yeah. to a point where either there uh, you need to make a drastic change or it's already too late. Yeah. And yeah. it's like what we had kind of think in the, the marketer world. I think that's why iOS 14 was such a nice thing in my opinion, because it kind of got all the fake people out of our market. Yeah, it, it truly, separated the men from the boys. Exactly. Yeah. And there's always gonna be offense because that's just how the world worked. It's like if you're lying or if you're pretending, it's always gonna come out. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's like, um, I would always say to people, it's like pretend until you're there. Because mm -hmm. obviously uh, first impressions count, Yeah. but to a certain degree, you know, it's like yeah. there are so many companies out there, so many brands who have this insane spend role just to keep up their persona, mm -hmm. but it's just hurting the business so much. And I yeah. can see it with like a lot of clients we work with as well. If you just speak with them and you see what they're doing is so many of like, it, it's to a certain point almost wasted potential. Yeah, well, like you guys said at the start, right? Like if you want that laptop lifestyle, quote unquote, you need to almost earn it to a certain extent. Like you mm -hmm. need to have the foundations there, Facts. you know, financially, mentally, uh, you know, and also in your business. Like if, if you're not making, let's say 10K a month, there's no, like, you have no <laughs> right being on that beach, right? Like you have no right being there exactly. sipping the pina colada. Mm -hmm. You need to do the reps. You need to put in the work before you get to that point. And like you said, you need to get to the top of the mountain first before you can, you know, take a step back. It's a, yeah, I think that's like, probably the, the best summary I think I would, like the biggest learning lesson I got from the four hour work week. And then again, it's like, I urge everyone to read the book, Yeah. but it's not like, hey, you should do it. It's like, you need to be in a position in your life where that makes sense. And yeah. I always have this conversation with Grenet, he always tells me, Aaron, the day you're gonna get kids, you're gonna call me and you say, okay, now, now I understand what you're meaning. <laughs> And I think Josh will probably get this around August because it's like there <laughs> will be certain moments in your life where yeah. you're just forced to make this decision and then somewhere in your brain it will click and you can make it. Yeah. You know, and I think it's like before that, I think that's kind of also the, the benefit you have if you do not have children or you don't have a relationship, there's nothing, there's no one you need to depend on. Like yeah. all you got is yourself. So you need to utilize that time to really figure yourself out. Yeah. Because like what is the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Yes, you and, know? and you need to have a, a, real, a real purpose to why you need the four hour work week. True. Because just uh, sitting on the beach or, it, it's, it's, or watching Netflix, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's uh, useless, of course. Yeah, you, you need to have a real purpose. Uh, if you have kids a lot for life changing moments, or for example, if you are, your uh, family member got sick, you need to take care of them, for example, and you want to have much more time, then it's really useful to, to, to have this process running. But it's like, it, again, it all comes down to, yeah, it sounds cliche to keep saying, but it comes down to your mindset. Because yeah. to get to that point, you need to be able to come out there. Because quite often, if you ask someone, it's like, who are you? The first thing they're gonna say, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm yeah. a brother. Yeah. But that's not what you are. It's an attachment. True, Like Good point. Ideally, what you wanna say, if you ask someone, who am I? Say, hey, I'm a, I'm a caring, loving, ambitious person. Yeah. Because by only by you being able to say that, you can delegate these tasks and you can get to the point. And again, it's like what Corne says, if your goal for a four hour work week is so that you can go on Instagram, show that you're on the beach every day, like you're starting completely wrong from the get-go. Yeah, Again, exactly. If, if your goal is to get the Lambo, by all means go for it. You know, if that's what you aspire and that's possible, that's fine. But if that is the only thing that is gonna drive you and wake up every morning, you're gonna fall very, very hard. Because yeah. they're all things and it's like, I don't wanna get in too much in, in materialistic things, but you need to have a greater purpose. Yeah, 100%. I think at its core, the four hour work week, what, what, what it's trying to portray is that you only focus on what pushes the needle and then you basically find ways to either automate, outsource or delegate everything else that is not a top priority. I think yes, that's the, yes. the perfect yeah. example. Oh, I think the perfect conclusion, I think, to the four hour work week. And, yeah. and you mentioned, Joshua, that um, that you've not, not right to, to, if you are not there, to, to, to be on the beach. Maybe that's a good uh, subject for an, our next podcast. And maybe we can more dive in the, the risks you, you need to, to yeah. make as an entrepreneur to, yeah, to, to get there. And uh, I'd say tune in next week and we'll find out. <laughs>